Hello, my name is Matt Forsty. I'm an attorney at Colorado Legal Services, and I will be briefly discussing Colorado's warranty of habitability law. This is a state law which says that rental housing in Colorado must be fit for human habitation. I'm only going to have time to cover some of the most important aspects of the law, so if you find yourself encountering one of these situations or want more detail on this law, please consult some of the resources that we'll link in the description um, and seek professional advice. In the time that we do have, I'm gonna briefly cover four topics. First, I'm gonna talk about what is covered by the warranty of habitability, what types of housing, and what types of issues. Second, I'm going to cover what should a renter do if they have a concern about a condition in their home. Third, I'm gonna talk about the renter's duties. Um, what does the renter need to do to maintain their home under this law? And fourth, I'm gonna give a few kind of practical suggestions or tips for people that may find themselves um, in one of these situations. So first, what is covered by the warranty of habitability? I'm gonna first talk about what types of housing are covered, and then second, I'm gonna talk about what types of issues are covered. So first, what types of rental housing are covered? In general, almost all rental housing in Colorado is going to be covered by the warranty of habitability law. There are, however, 10 exceptions listed in the law. I won't have time to cover each and every one of those, but I'll give a few examples. So, uh, for instance, uh, temporary occupancy in a hotel or motel that lasts less than 30 days, that's not covered. Occupancy in a jail or a prison or a hospital is not covered by this law. And there's also an exception for folks that are renting a single family home where the tenant in the home is actually capable of performing maintenance themselves and has a written agreement with the landlord that says that the tenant will be responsible for uh, the maintenance. So those are just a few examples of the exceptions. There are a number of other exceptions in the statute, but in general, uh, almost all rental housing in Colorado is going to be covered by this law. So those are the types of housing that are covered. What types of issues are covered by the warranty of habitability law? Well, in general, um, any condition that interferes with the renter's life, health, or safety that was not caused by the renter is covered by this law. But the law also helps us um, understand what is covered by giving us a specific list. And I'm gonna give a number of examples from that list of things that are covered. So for example, uh, if the roof or exterior walls leak, that's covered. Broken windows or exterior doors that have broken locks, that's a habitability issue. Problems with the gas and plumbing are issues under this law. Mold may be an issue under the habitability law. Um, the type of mold that routinely occurs on surfaces that become um, wet under normal use, like a shower curtain or a bathroom window, that's generally not gonna be covered by the warranty of habitability law, but serious mold, um, for example, from a, a flooding or something like that, a, a sewer flooding, um, that would be covered under, under the warranty of habitability law. I will stop and just mention that mold is a very, um, a, a very difficult issue because it affects everyone differently and there aren't specific standard, government standards for dealing with mold or assessing mold. Um, so I do recommend folks seek professional advice if they're, if they're concerned about mold exposure. So back to that list of issues that are covered by the warranty of habitability law. Uh, broken appliances may be covered if the appliance is one that was provided um, by the landlord. Um, lack of hot and cold running water. Problems with the sewage disposal system. Problems with the heat. If the electrical lighting and wiring is not kept in good working order. If the common areas are not kept clean um, or if they have excessive garbage. If there are infestations of bugs, pests, rodents, that may be covered. Um, and if the floors, stairways, and railings inside the building are in poor condition, that would be covered. Um, but in general, you know, aside from that list, if there's a condition that materially interferes with the tenant's life, health, or safety, that is the type of thing um, that is covered by the warranty of habitability law. So I've talked about the types of housing that are covered, most rental housing, uh, some examples of the types of issues that are covered by the warranty of habitability law, but what should a renter do if they find themselves encountering one of these situations um, and have a concern about their home? So there are two basic steps. One, the tenant needs to notify the landlord of the condition. 
Then after the landlord receives proper notification, the landlord then has a duty to begin making repairs within certain timeframes that I'll talk about. So I wanna talk about that first step, the written notification from the tenant to the landlord. The warranty of habitability law requires the tenant to send a written or electronic notice to the landlord. Even if the landlord actually knows about what's going on, um, the law still requires the tenant to send a notice anyways. Um, so even if the tenant has had a phone call with the landlord about the condition and the landlord has said, okay, I'll respond, um, the tenant should still follow up and send a written or electronic notice to the landlord. So what should that notice look like? The tenant should review uh, their lease to see what the lease says about giving notice. For example, the lease might say that in order to give notice, um, a letter needs to be mailed to a specific address. Or uh, the lease might say that um, notice must be submitted by the tenant via an online tenant portal. That's very common. So the tenant should take a look at their lease, see what it says in terms of giving notice, and follow the steps set forth in the lease for giving that written or electronic notice. If the lease doesn't say how to give notice, then the tenant can uh, give that written or electronic notice by whatever means they've usually used to communicate with the landlord in the past. So if the lease doesn't say anything about it and the tenant home and the landlord usually exchange text messages, the tenant can send that required notice via text message. The content of the notice, I want to spend a couple of minutes on that. The notice should describe the problem with reasonable detail and give the landlord permission to enter the unit to make the repairs that are necessary. That's required by the warranty of habitability law. And finally, um, the uh, tenant has a responsibility to keep records of the notices that they give. So after the landlord has received that notice, they now have a duty to start addressing the habitability issues. And there are two different timeframes um, within, the, within which the landlord might have to respond. First, if the problem identified by the tenant significantly interferes with the tenant's life, health, or safety, the landlord must start taking action within 24 hours of getting the notice. Now, if it's another issue, um, uh, you know, not, not interfering with the tenant's life, health, or safety, but still implicated by the warranty of habitability law, the landlord has to take action within 96 hours, that's four days. Now, the landlord does not necessarily have to fix the entire issue within those time frames, but they have to um, start taking reasonable action within those time frames. Also, just note that those time frames only apply to issues that arise under this warranty of habitability law. They don't necessarily apply to all types of maintenance requests that a tenant might uh, submit to a landlord. And then finally, one more important note, if the uninhabitable condition was caused by the tenant, the landlord does not have any duty to repair under this law. So I've talked about um, what should a renter do if they have a concern about their home. First, send that written or electronic notice, and then the landlord's duty to repair is triggered. Next, I want to talk about the renter's duties under the warranty of habitability law. There are some specific requirements that renters uh, are supposed to follow in order to maintain a, a safe and uh, a safe and healthy home. And those duties are summarized as follows. Um, the tenant should keep the residence reasonably clean, safe, and sanitary. The tenant needs to dispose of ashes, garbage, and other waste in a clean, safe, sanitary, and legal way. The tenant should use the utilities and appliances in a reasonable manner. The tenant should act in a way that does not disturb their neighbor's peaceful enjoyment. And the tenant cannot intentionally or negligently damage or destroy any part of the residence. That's just a brief summary of what the renter's duties are under the warranty of habitability. Now finally, I just want to provide a few quick um, practical tips and suggestions. Now first I should address um, what happens if, uh, if there is, if a rental unit is uninhabitable, the tenant provides the required notice, and then the landlord does not respond within the time frame that they're required to under the law. What can the tenant do to vindicate their rights um, to, to, to have safe and, safe and healthy housing? 
Um, now, this law provides a number of remedies for tenants, and those uh, remedies include uh, ending the lease early, bringing a lawsuit for a court order for the landlord to pair, repair the premises, or a, uh, a lawsuit for damages. Um, and, and, it, and it can also provide um, it also provides a remedy for the tenant to deduct rent and make repairs under very, very specific circumstances. Now, I, I want to just caution folks um, that specific procedures have to be followed in order to access any of these remedies, and it is very difficult to um, access these remedies without professional help. Um, so definitely recommend um, if, if, if a tenant finds himself in a situation that they seek uh, legal advice and professional help. Um, before taking any of those steps. The second kind of suggestion I have is both for tenants and landlords to, uh, to know your lease. Um, review the terms of the lease to see what may apply in the situation. For example, I talked about the importance of the notice requirements in the lease. That's, that's a very important thing to know. So um, definitely consult the lease, know the lease. A uh, third suggestion um, is uh, more of a practical one, but to think about insurance. And this is both for tenants and landlords as well. Many tenants are required to have renter's insurance under their lease. Um, even if they're not required to, it's often a good idea because um, it can provide a backstop for tenants um, to um, get reimbursement for personal property damage or other things that, um, that they may not be reimbursed for um, by the landlord. Um, these situations are very difficult for everyone involved, so having good insurance um, can often um, you know, make, make sure that folks are made whole. Um, retain all documentation. I talked about this a little bit. Um, tenants are responsible for maintaining uh, documentation of their notices, and it's also a good idea just to document. If, if there are uninhabitable conditions in your home, take photographs, take videos. Um, the more documentation, I think, the better. And uh, uh, another uh, suggestion is many cities and counties have uh, code enforcement officials. And uh, that may be another uh, avenue to uh, get help and relief um, if a renter thinks that a condition in their home may violate the uh, municipal code or the code that applies in that area. Um, you know, certainly uh, reaching out to the local code enforcement officials is an option. And finally, I uh, just did want to mention that there is a provision, provision in this law that um, prohibits retaliation. Landlords are generally not allowed to retaliate against tenants who make a good faith complaint um, either to the landlord or to a government agency about a condition in their home. And so with that being said, I've talked about um, some of the most important parts of the Colorado's Warranty of Habitability Law. Certainly I haven't had the ability to cover everything. Um, so if you find yourself in one of these situations, consult the resources that we'll, we'll provide links to um, and seek professional advice. Thank you very much.